business piece in economics. It places a special emphasis on metrics to measure peace, then to ascribe an economic value to changes in peace. Now, if we start to look at that, the first thing we can do is we can start off the Global Peace Index is calculate the cost of violence to the global economy. So, if we look in 2018, that came to $15 trillion. So, to put that in perspective, that's 12.4% of global GDP. Now, another way of looking at that is if we had a 1% reduction in the cost of violence to the global economy, that would be the equivalent of all overseas developmental aid in 2018. Now, no one can imagine a world which is totally peaceful, but we all can imagine, let's say, a 10% improvement in peace. I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can. And that would be equivalent to about $1.5 trillion. That would be the same as looking at all foreign direct investment last year and also the same as, let's say, adding three new countries to the uh, world economy, which would be equivalent to the size of, let's say, Belgium, Denmark and Ireland. Now, having the Global Peace Index, we've got the ability now to be able to do statistical analysis. And we've been through maybe 10,000 different data sets, indexes, attitudinal surveys to understand the factors which most commonly associated with peace. So in other words, we call that positive peace. And that's the attitudes, institutions and structures which create and sustain peaceful societies. And as a body of work, it's the only body of work which has been empirically derived, which actually comes at this concept of what creates peace. If we start to look at it, you can break it down into eight different pillars. So they're things like well-functioning government, so strong business environment, equitable distribution of resources, free flow of information, good relationship with neighbours, acceptance of the rights of others, low levels of corruption and high levels of the human capital. And they form as a system. And system thinking is really important. We run our societies as we look at it based off looking at cause and effect. There's a problem, what's the cause, try and fix it. But that's the way the physical world works. We look at systems, which is the way, let's say, our bodies work, and from extrapolation of that societies, they work very differently. So the, if we look at the whole, it's more than the sum of the parts. Think of yourself, think of your consciousness. So now as we start to look at positive peace, we find that also statistics related to a lot of other things we think are important in society. And so the first one would be higher per capita income, higher levels of wealth, better performance and ecological measures, better measures on happiness, better measures on the things like development, so the Millennium Development Goals, countries which are higher in positive peace perform much better on that. But probably the thing which is most key to this conference here is its relationship to economics and economic development. So if we look at that now, what we find is there's an incredibly strong statistical relationship between improvements in positive peace and performance of six different major macroeconomic